running about 11.3, dealing with the FOIL method. So we've already talked a little bit about FOIL because we've used it a few times in the past, but now we're really gonna dive head first into really using it. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip the launch. So FOIL hopefully we can have a little bit of extra time. Worked out or in Alaska? Huh? Worked out or in Alaska? Yep. Mr. Sherd sure knows what's up. Wait, why is Seth out? Uh, who knows? Did the, you uh, get your man this morning? Huh? Did you get your man? understanding foil and we're going to show that it represents first outer inner and last yeah but to help remind like that's so if you want to write down the acronym that's why we use that acronym so the first thing that we want to do is look at why would we use FOIL instead of something else. Greg? Just the same. Remember the O? That's funny. Thank you. So if we didn't know about FOIL, when we look at this problem, we'd say, oh, we need to distribute, right? There's something right up against the parentheses. So we're saying this parentheses needs to distribute to that parentheses. So the 2x would go to the 3x, and the 2x would go to the negative 7. Then below, we want to show that the 4 goes to the 3x, and the 4 goes to the negative 7. So draw those arrows. Uh, I guess I'm just going to stay. Yeah. Mm. OK, well, you can write on top of well, this. It's OK. Really small line, but I don't know. So then my blue values, 2x times 3x plus a 2x times negative 7 plus my red values, 4 times 3x, and 4 times a negative 7. So then, here's where some of you guys are getting hung up. If I have a 2x times a 3x, Greg? 6x squared. 6x squared. Some of you guys are trying to forget about the fact that we square it. So then, 2x times negative 7, negative times a positive, Negative 14x. Negative 14x. So we could either write plus the negative, which right now we'll leave it as plus the negative, and you'll see why in a second. Then 4 times 3x, 12x. And then 4 times negative 7, negative 28. So now we group like terms, and we always will end up, especially when it's a binomial times a binomial, we will end up with the x to the first power, the first index having two terms that need combined. So then I say, well, I've got 12 positives, 14 negatives. So when I combine them, I really get negative 2x. And then I have a negative 28. So I write everything just as subtractions instead of the plus the negatives. Try the got it on your own real quick. We are trying to move fast because I just want to give you guys time. Actually, I'm just going to pull up the notes. It's easier than working through here. Oh, don't rename. Hey, be nice. <laughs> Leon. Hey, hey guys. The more we focus and have less chatter, the longer you have to do your homework here. So when I take my x over, because we're not quite foiling yet, we're just kind of showing the distribution. So what terms did you get? Okay, so I got uh, 4x squared. 4x squared from that first multiplication. Okay, then I got um, uh, plus 24x. So I'm going to actually take the, my um, second arrow first. I'm just going to do the negative 3x. Then we get negative 24x. And we could write plus a negative or just minus. And then minus 18. And then minus 18. Yeah, why is it negative negative? Um, oh, sorry. I, I looked at this negative. Good catch, guys. And then we combine our like terms, and we end up at the end. 4x
Now we get into talking about why we actually play. We know that based on what we've drawn here, each term gets, like each term in the first parentheses gets multiplied by two terms. Each term in the second parentheses gets multiplied by two terms. It all depends on how you look at it. So if we set up a table to look at this, we know that x is going to have to multiply by the 4x and the negative 5. Negative 3 is going to have to multiply by the 4x and the negative 5. So we can really look at a table like this to find your products. 4x times x, 4x squared. You can go ahead and draw these lines in if you want. I cut it out because it was really dark. That's why I emptied that space. x times negative 5, negative 5x. 4x times negative 3. And negative 3 times negative 5, positive 15. Now combine your like terms, and we get 4x squared minus 17x plus a 15. Set up a table to solve the got it. The table method is pretty easy. Because you just put one binomial across top, one binomial down the side, and you can just work it and through. And it doesn't look at it either. Like that. Yeah, it's, oh it all, actually, that probably says that you're more, um, if we talk multiple intelligences, you're probably uh, like spatially aware, like artistically, a little bit, because like, when your brain works like that, you like to see it more than you like to, yeah. Does it matter what variables and values I put where? Nope. No. Yeah. Nope. It really doesn't actually. Because I could swap the 3x and the 1. Oh, even on the chart. Are they yeah. Like when you're writing ah, the so thing? what do you mean by that? You have to put the bigger square or what is it called? Index. index. Power, right? Yeah. So highest index comes first. So you're just making me laugh because I look back there and you look like my seventh graders when they try to use the standard desk and they're really short. <laughs> so then 3x squared, 12x, just x, and just 4. Combine our like terms, highest index first, 3x squared, 13x, be careful because there's actually a 1 in front of here, and 4. Questions, comments, concerns? The only way that FOIL changes this is it gives you a means to remember what you have to do. So when you are thinking about FOIL being first, outer, inner, last, you can just look at the sum of my first terms. 5x and 2x would be 5x times 2x, 10x squared. 10x squared. My outer terms, so now my outer means the first and the last, my inner means the second and the third. So my outer 5x times 1, well that's easy, 5x. My inner, negative 3 times 2x, negative 6x. And my last, negative 3. When we do FOIL, if my binomials have been written correctly, my like terms will always end up in the middle together. So 5x minus 6x, I can then solve this as 10x squared minus x minus 3. Questions? I figured we'd go pretty quick. Foil this. Hey, he doesn't have anything to do with this. For all we know, he didn't understand basic math. One way that I've had students do this in the past to help them remember is on top, they'll do the firsts and the insides. On bottom, they'll do the outer and then the last. If you need to, vis if you need to see what's going on, Okay, I don't know exactly how I. On one side or like on top? Of it? 
So if we did the first and the last, oh, and then the inner and the outer. So apparently we can now call this the smiley face method. If you want to on the top do the firsts and the lasts, then on the bottom do the inners and the outs. I guess it looks like a smiley face they're saying. I can kind of see that. Why are they not Right? I don't know. No, it's like a little mouth. It's like a little mouth. Mackenzie, what'd you get in the end? Fully simplified. Now, question for you. Can anybody see a shortcut? We want to know how to foil, and always foil will get you your answer. But is there a shortcut for how I can find this middle term since it comes from the like terms? Leon? Multiply the variable. I don't think that was a shortcut. Okay. I think. Two. Jacob? Okay, so it might be. So because. You have to have negative 4 times x, and you also have to have positive 2 times x. Uh huh. Eventually. Here's a shortcut you can take. For your x power, or your um, x value, your x coefficient, just find the difference between your constants. That will be your coefficient for your x. So that kind of lets you do the. Um, last and the middle together, it, it, or if you want to check it that way. Yeah, but isn't it just trying to get the six? Well, that depends on what time you subtract. You subtract. You subtract. Okay, yeah, it does. It never mind. Maybe I'm freezing this wrong. Let me try to remember what I was actually meaning. So we can use this here when, now when we square a binomial. Actually, we want surface area, so we don't. something. Area of a circle. Oh, pi. pi. So it would be the pi r squared times 2 for both bases. Now when we square a binomial, and we're going to do more with this next week, you square the, think about squaring. What would be x plus 1 times x plus 1? Yeah, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. We're going to see that next week. So all you really need to know is when we square it, we can write it out and then FOIL it. So we can get x squared, 2x once we combine them, plus 1. a squared, a is your first term, plus 2 times a plus b squared, which b is 1 here. So... Um, that times pi times 2. So we can really just say 2 pi times that value. x squared plus 2x plus 1. Then, now the lateral area is the part that still hangs some of you guys up. We could, we can, and we will. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. Mackenzie? Yeah, how do we find the lateral area? Yeah, it's a circumference times the height. So first thing we have to do is find out the circumference. Yeah, 2 pi r, right? So if we do 2 pi r, well, that's 2 times pi times the x plus 1. Hmm? Then times your height. Yeah. 
Why not? Because it's all multiplication. String multiplication. However, we have binomials involved. Mm -hmm. So because we now parentheses is always kind of like you can put a bunch of parentheses that aren't necessary, but sometimes they really help you see things. Hey Ben, why is it every time I look back here you're fingering? You stretching? We'll go with that for now. Yeah. Focus. <laughs> so what do we get there then for the lateral area? Here, it'll make my life way easier if I go ahead and distribute this. So this should actually be 2 pi x plus 2 pi when I did that distribution. So this is my lateral area. Question? Yeah, how did you do that? Because we had 2 pi times the radius, and the radius was x plus 4. We essentially distribute the 2 pi in. Can't you do the radius with just the x plus 4? Sorry, yeah, that's, I was realizing I had written something wrong, which is how we get 2 pi x and just 2 pi. So this is my circumference. So now that we have a binomial and a binomial, we want a FOIL. And that's why I had drawn those extra parentheses, because I really do want them there, because I want to distribute to everything. So if we do our first outer inner last, we get 2 pi x squared for my first. My outer is just going to be 8 pi x. My inner is 2 pi x. Still my like terms come in the middle. And then 8 pi. Not you 8 pi. So then we get 2 pi x squared plus 10 pi x plus 8 pi. And we would combine them. So now I want to think about what this is distributed. So I'm running out of space. So my 2b was actually 2 pi x squared plus 4 pi x plus 2 pi. So then when I sum that with my lateral area, my total surface area is going to be um, 4 pi x squared plus, what is it? 14 pi x, right? Yeah. Uh, 10 pi. But that gives me, for any value of x, in a cylinder like this. So if you're like a manufacturing company and you're making different sizes of cylinders, you might say, this is the ratio they'll always have. If that's the relationship they'll always be, and the different sizes will have different x values. So that would be the application where we do something like that. Because then you'd want to know what the surface area is if you're trying to print a label or paint it or something like that, or how much metal it would use. Do you guys think we need to walk through the Goddard, or is it, I mean, yeah, I'll skip I mean, it if you guys feel okay. Way too long. You need help I mean, I That's why I'm trying to get to just doing our homework. Yeah? So, we can solve this without going through that extremely long process. Yeah. Um, so, the height doesn't change, so you can mess with that. No. Are you okay, Jacob? Okay, so we're going to look at five, and then we're going to do some of your homework problems together, because I figured that'd just be just as beneficial. So problem five here, simpler form of a trinomial times a binomial. So multiply by arranging the polynomials vertical. Why would we do this? What when we have, like, think of this like a three-digit number and a two-digit number. When we do that multiplication process, Greg? Because so we just drop the yeah, so we can do the process like we used to with like numbers, negative five times negative seven, 35. Then x times negative seven, negative seven x. So that's positive. Then three x squared times negative seven, negative 21 x squared. And here's the real reason why. Then I stack 
how they need to be stacked. So when I look at, now I move over my 2x, and I do 2x times 5, that's 10x, so I put that right below my negative 7x. Do you want to write the bottom one? Uh, well, there is no constant, so you could say plus 0, or you just don't show it. Either way. Because there is no actual like place value here. The real reason that we drop the 0 when we're multiplying like that is to hold place value. Here it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, 2x times negative 5, yes, thank you. Then 2x times x, 2x squared. And 2x times 3x squared will be 6x cubed. I can say it, but I can't write it, apparently. Then you can just sum those and make your life easy. Negative 7 and a negative 10. Give me a negative 17 combined. Negative 21 and positive 2. Negative 19. And then 6x cubed. Feeling all right? Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather just, I, I really don't like giving Friday homework. So I just want to pass this out and then look at what you think is going to be tough and we can do them together. All right, check it out. I'm going to pull it up. <laughs> See what you think we need to do together. Oh, yeah. Odds or evens. Oh, okay. And three of them are the... So, choose odds. If I was you, choose odds. Yeah. Because then you only do one of this set on the back. I choose odds. So I would just do odds. I would just on the top just write odds. All right. So now for um, 11 through 15, because you're not going to do 10, obviously, you're probably going to need another sheet of paper. And line paper or graph paper will work really well. Graph paper, the squares are kind of small to use. So I would do line paper since we want to solve those using the table. So these we distribute. And we want to look at like the arrows. Really, we are only practicing this because FOIL doesn't always work. It only works with binomial, binomial. So we want to practice the distributive in case we have like binomial times monomial or binomial times trinomial or anything like that. Do you guys want to do any of these together? We should yeah. do 29. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Not now. Yes, right now. Right now. Right now. Great idea. Um, I'm going to actually swap what is where. So hold on, give me a second. So we are. Yay! We already clarified this. Hey, we're doing 29. <laughs> What'd you say? It doesn't really matter. I mean, there it's the same math process. 29 just has a little bit more number. So radius is 3x plus 1. The height is 3 times the radius, so it's just 9x plus 3. To find your 2b, yes, it's going to be 2 times the pi r squared. So the first thing we really want to do is r squared. How do I do r squared? binomials square. I don't think we really square that many binomials on this. Yeah, we'll talk about that trick more next week. So we're really just multiplying it by itself. <laughs> 3x times 3x. 9x squared. The, now, what's nice about 
What's nice about the binomials is you know your outer and your inner will be identical. So once you find your outer is 3x, double it. So we get 6x. And your last, yeah, is just the 1. So now we can plug that back in there. So you really have 2 pi times that amount. So I could really just replace this and say 2b would just be this times 2 pi. I'm curious if anyone has been thinking about the last cylinder we did to come up with an easier method of what we could wait to do till the end. <laughs> what is it, Strava? Because 2b involves 2 pi, and my lateral area is 2 times the radius times pi, we can really wait to do the 2 pi multiplication until we sum it. So forget about the 2 pi for a moment and just keep the 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. That's kind of why I waited before. I was hoping somebody would see it. So if you think about your lateral area, well, what is my radius? Sorry, yeah, there's still an h in here. So all we're really going to do here is the radius times the height and leave the 2 pi alone. So I'm going to leave my 2 pi out here. My radius was 3x plus 1. Height was 9x plus 3. When we FOIL it, 3x times 9x, 27x squared. Hey, Ben. I don't know that you've been focused all period. Can you at least try for the last few minutes? 3x times 3, 9x. 1 times 9x, another 9x. And a 3. So what's convenient about this now is I can just take this value, add it to this value. Well, OK, I'm going to simplify that. Sorry, I forgot to combine my 9x's. Then multiply by the 2 pi. So really, um, Happy that I have more board to work with. Yeah, sorry. I'll write and stop talking. <laughs> it's way hard. Like you don't realize how hard it is to write with a mouse. No, I meant like. I'll squat though. Didn't you just write a negative? That works. I knew that. Wait, this goes back to our. Nine x squared? No, because nine x plus nine x. That's like nine bananas plus nine bananas. Yeah. This goes back to our factoring lesson. Because that 2 pi is common, it's easier to wait till last. So then we add these. Now the question is, yeah? Multiply by 4x. So that's exactly what I was about to ask. Since we have to add the lateral area plus the 2b, we have 2 pi on both of them. So does that stay 2 pi or does it become 4 pi? 4 pi. 4 pi, right? Because we're saying 2b, actually, this is la. So now we're saying la plus 2b. So we're really adding everything we can. So I'm going to work right to left just because. 18x, 6x, 27x squared, 9x squared. I'm pretty sure that's a remake of an old song, by the way. Hotline Bling. 
describing as a dumb name and a dumb song. It is. Uh, the, the music it video is even worse. I'm sure it yeah, is. Yeah, I think it was the Colombia. 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 Colombia.